It's cold. Whew. Hey everyone, this is Ryan King, and in this quick Blender tutorial, I'm going to show you how to make this procedural snow in Blender. And this tutorial had better be quick because I'm getting cold. Okay, so let's jump into Blender now and get started. I should probably take this off. All right, and before we start, I wanted to say that if you want to download the project files, they're going to be available on my Gumroad and my Patreon. So as I said, this is going to be a completely procedural material. We're only going to be using Blender shader nodes, but I am going to be using an HDRI to get some nice realistic lighting. And I also have a few lights on this sphere here. Now how I made this sphere is I pressed Shift A and I added an Icosphere. Then on the Icosphere settings right behind me, you can just change up this subdivision. So I changed it up to something like seven or six, and then you can just shade that smooth. And why I subdivided this so high is because we're gonna be adding a displacement modifier to make the snow all lumpy. And one last thing, I'm gonna be using the Node Wrangler add-on while I'm making this. So if you don't have that enabled, you can go edit and go to preferences. And then on the add-ons here, just search for Node Wrangler and then enable that. And I'll show you what that does in a moment. All right, so I just added a quick material right here and it just has a principled shader on it. So the first thing that we're gonna do is press Shift A and I'm gonna add a Veroni texture. And I'm gonna set the scale to something around 4.5, but you can change this if you want. Then with this Veroni texture selected, I'm gonna press Control T. And that's using one of the features in the Node Wrangler and it gives us this mapping and texture coordinate. What I'm gonna do is just take this object and plug it into the vector. Now if I control shift and click on the Veroni texture, you can preview what it's doing to the sphere. Now what I'm gonna do is duplicate the Veroni texture, so just select it and press shift D, and I'm just gonna move it down here. Then I'm also gonna plug the mapping up to the vector on that one as well. Now I'm gonna change this from F1 to F2 because I think that looks a bit nicer, and I'm also gonna change this to Manhattan. Now let's control shift and click on this Veroni texture so that we can see what it's doing. And I wanna change the scale up a lot more so that it's a lot smaller. And I'm gonna change this to something maybe around 50, somewhere around there. And you can see if I zoom in, it's giving this nice little icy detail. So now I wanna mix these two Veroni textures together. So I'm gonna press shift A and I'm gonna search for a mix RGB. Just drop it in there and then plug them both up with the distance to the colors. And you can see what it's doing now. It has that little icy detail, but because we have these big spots here, it's giving some areas with more contrast. Now, if I plug this mix into the base color and then control shift click on the base color, you can see that now it's starting to look like snow, but you can see that it's really black in those areas of contrast. And snow is usually white and blue because it's made up of frozen water. So what I'm gonna do is make this black color blue instead. So I'll press Shift A, and I'm gonna search for a color ramp node. Just drop the color ramp node in between these two nodes, and then this black one right here, I'm just gonna make it a very light blue. And you can see now it's definitely looking a lot more like snow. Now snow is usually very reflective because it's usually wet and icy. So this roughness value right here, I'm gonna change this down to 0.1, and you can see now it's really shiny. But this snow material doesn't have any bump, and so what I'm gonna do is just select all of these, and move them over. And then what I'm gonna do is plug this color into the normal to give it some bump. Now you can see it looks really weird. This is a shading issue, and this is because we haven't converted the color, which is yellow, to the normal, which is purple. So we need to give it a node to convert it to normal data. So I'll press Shift A, and I'm gonna search for a bump node. Just drop the bump node right in here in between these connections, and then plug this up to the height. Now this bump is way too high, so I'm gonna turn it way down. So change it to something like maybe a 0.1, something like that, but it still looks a bit simple, so I wanna give it even more detail. So what I'm gonna do is Shift D the bump to duplicate it and just drop it in right there. Then I'll press Shift A and I'm gonna search for a noise texture and just drop the noise texture down here. Now I'm gonna take that mapping and plug the mapping into the vector of the noise texture. Now I'm gonna change the scale to something around four, and then if I control shift and click on it, you can see what it's doing. It has some parts that are lighter and some parts are darker. I'm gonna plug the mapping into the vector right there, and you can see now it's a little bit smaller. You can change this scale around to something that you like. 
and then I'm going to plug the factor into the height on the bump. And if you plug it into the height here, you can see this bump is connected to the normal, and then this one is connected to the height. So if I control shift and click on this now, now you can see that it's adding these two together. So you can see there's a little tiny detail, and then there's also the bigger, lumpier detail. And I want to make this one a little bit bigger, so maybe I'll change it to something like 0.2 on the strength there. And now if I control shift click back on the principled, you can see it's a bit more bumpy and looks nicer. So let's just do this one more time. I'm going to press shift D on the bump, drop it down here. Now I'm going to grab this noise texture, duplicate it and just put it over here. And then I want to plug this noise texture up to the mapping again. So I'll just drag this all the way over and drop it into the vector here. And then because I want this to be really high detail, I'm going to change this to something really high, like maybe 170 or something like that. And then I also want to change this detail way up, so I'm going to change it to the max, which is 16. And then if we control shift and click on it, you can see that now it has a lot of really, really small detail. And now I'll just plug the factor up to this height here. And now you can see it's adding all of these three together. It's adding in this icy detail. It's adding in the bigger lumps. And then it's also adding the really tiny detail. So now if we control shift and click on the principled, you can see if we zoom in here, it has a lot more bump and some really nice detail. So this is looking pretty nice. I definitely think it looks like snow, but it's not very lumpy around the edges because you can see it's just a sphere here. So what I'm going to do is just make sure this sphere is selected and I'm going to go to the modifiers tab and then I'll click on add modifier and add a displace modifier. Now you can see it just makes it look like it's bigger. What we want to do is add a texture to tell it where it's being displaced. So we can click on this new button right here and it's going to add a texture. Then we can click on this little button over here and that's going to take us to the texture panel. Now right now it's set to image or movie. I just want to select it and change it to clouds. It's way too strong right now, but we can fix that. Um, I'm just going to change the size, whatever you want. You could make it smaller or you could make it bigger. It really depends on what you're doing. And then let's go back over and click on the wrench right here to get to the modifiers. And I'm going to change the strength to something really small. So I'm going to change it to maybe 0.15 and you can see now that it's not blown way too big. But if you zoom in, you can see right here on the edges, it's all lumpy and bumpy and random. And here we have the finished snow procedural material. So I hope you enjoyed this quick blender tutorial and I hope it was helpful. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in a future video.